Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockhoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. If you enjoy inspiring your teams, especially if you lead teams of leaders, we have a great resource for you. Our Gapology Inspiration Collection contains short, bite-sized messages that you can easily consume and share with your teams. We've laid the books, Volumes 1 and 2, out in 52 short lessons that can become teachable points of view for you to deliver to your team during your weekly meetings or conversations. And we have more on the way, so stay tuned for all that. You can learn more by visiting our website, gapology.org, or by just looking for Gapology Inspirations on Amazon.com. And as for tonight, we're going to dig into some methods for analyzing your business to acquire insight into how you're doing and what things can be done to move in the direction that will help deliver your purpose and highest objectives. So let's go ahead and get the show rolling with Martinez. Y'all good to go? I'm good to go. Okay. You've got your Chardonnay. I I just poured it and I've got it. (laughs) It's not ingested yet. Okay. Do you need me to pause? Wait a little bit. No, I, I'll I'll ingest it as we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. To keep uh, me on track, it's yeah. a, a, quite a joy to me. Believe it or not. Yeah, I actually have a glass of it right here in front of me. What? Yep. Well, I figured you know you raised the bar, you set the bar for how to do these podcasts, so I need to follow your lead. What would you call it? Podcast Chardonnay. What do you have? <laughs> I don't know. Some cheap stuff. Oh, man. Very cool. Anyhow. Well, maybe we should get the show rolling. Um, I'm excited about tonight. You know, um, we're talking about ex- exceptional reporting, and um, I'm not naturally an analysis kind of person. I'm not a numbers person, as anybody out there who knows me uh, would <laughs> would attest to. But I'm always intrigued by it and really inspired by people who can really connect with the numbers. But I value the numbers. I understand that the numbers relate to behavior. So I'm really excited to talk through uh, our topic tonight. And I know you've got some really great notes on this, Mark. So uh, um, you want to kick her off? Well, it's it's um, it's good that I am a numbers person since you are not. <laughs> yeah, so. I know we we do c- contrast that way. That's for sure. T- t- together, we make a killer combination. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we have found that in many of our clients, they are not using exception reporting effectively, or they are not using exception reporting at all, mm-hmm. and it is a it is a total game changer. So exception reporting, if you simpled it down, it's it's just determining what the key metrics are for your for your business. Very narrow group of key metrics. And then uh, reporting on those metrics so that the leadership fully understands the behaviors that equals those and can and, and can drive those. And there's many other advantages, but that's a big one. We we had a client who was a home builder. And when we looked at their metrics, it was there was more than could fit on a, a page <laughs> if you listed them individually. Would that be safe to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> and what we found in looking at the metrics of a home builder was that days to deliver was just one of 50 metrics days to get the home built in o- in other words one of 50 metrics what they didn't realize was that it was the key metric and that when they were the home builder that could deliver the home in 3 months and everyone in that town was delivering homes in 6 months that their homes sold at an incredible rate Sales went through the roof because of a metric of home delivery. 
So does that make sense, Brian? Yeah, yeah, totally. You have to, as a as an organization, know what the key metrics are that that truly drive your business. And it, it can't be a bunch of things. We suggest three to five very narrow metrics. And uh, when you use exception reporting around those, we have seen a hundred percent success rate. I don't know that we've ever missed. Yeah. It, you know, the thing that always blows me away is that oftentimes people don't connect with the reason for the number. You know, why do we have this particular number as our goal, our objective, our expectations, whatever that might be? They don't understand how it connects to their role and the things that they're being held accountable to. Um, and I think exceptional reporting is a great way to do that. If you can narrow it down to these, say, three to five things that are the most important and how understand how every role connects to those three to five things, you really get people bought in on the purpose of the actual number itself. Yeah, well said, well said. Well, let me give the definition of exception reporting so everyone knows what we're talking about. It's simply a reporting that compares the performance of your team by individual or teams on the key metrics. You know, it's that simple. It's a consistent reporting of performance. And again, we're talking three to five. This reporting is then published. The numbers are out there. Brian's number one and Mark's number three. Wow, I don't like that. You know, it uh, it affects behavior of the team, but it gets published. It gets published on a rhythmic basis. So the team knows when it's coming out. That affects their behavior. So it truly moves performance dramatically in a positive direction by creating a focus and an accountability. Uh, the most famous company today that does this is Salesforce.com stock symbol CRM. So they've worked with some of the organizations we've worked with and we've seen their work. But we have seen uh, the clients we've worked with really miss on this one because they don't understand it. We had a client that had 45 expectations. Mm -hmm. We're saying three to five. They said 45. We quickly narrowed that 45 to five by having them rank them in relation to their impact on profitability. And we were able to uh, move results in dramatic fashion. But the, the key is to have the right three to five and to then publish results, exception reporting, by the team in relation to those. So what, what would happen, Brian, if I told you that on Monday morning, we were gonna publish your results in Gapology for the week, what would happen? Mm -hmm. Well, I would have a laser focus on everything <laughs> that I, I had to contribute to around, you know, Gapology, everything that we do here. So what if I told you that we were gonna publish the number of new clients you had brought to Gapology for the week. Oh, yeah. I, I'd be all over it. You'd be all over new clients. Yeah. 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 So if that were the measure we wanted, we would tell Brian that, and we would then publish those results, uh, Brian versus Mark, I gather, since we're <laughs> the only two here. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but, <laughs> yeah. but picture, picture a team the size that you have and how that affects their behavior for the week. We're gonna publish that, Brian, every week. We're then gonna accumulate it and publish it for the month, the quarter, and the year. And by the way, at the end of the year, we're gonna have a, a, a yearly banquet that celebrates our top performance. So either you or Mark is gonna be the top performer. Would that affect your behavior? Mm -hmm. Oh, totally, 100%. Yeah, so what we've seen is Leaders that don't know about exception reporting, that's a big gap. Leaders that, or companies that pick the wrong metrics to focus on, they actually aren't the key metrics. We have seen 
a lack of accountability around those metrics, that can be an issue. So if you're saying these are the top metrics, you had better as an organization be creating accountability around that. And then one of the biggest things we've seen is an actual lack of curiosity on behalf of leadership as to why Brian is producing three new clients per week for Gapology and Mark's producing only one. Would it be safe to say that Brian's behavior is different than Mark's? There should be a curiosity in leadership created by exception reporting about why this number is here and this number is here. This person is producing this level. This person is producing this level or team is producing those levels. And what is the difference in behavior? And once you figure that out, you can explode the business. Yeah, I think I think what you're hitting on there is, is something that's incredibly important. Oftentimes, I think we get so caught up in the number that we don't look at the reason for the number. So, you know, something to really consider is, well, first of all, what's the purpose for the analysis? We need to figure out what's the result, what's causing the result. Um, what can I do about it? What can my team do about it? How can I affect those those numbers? Um, so taking a step back away from the number and using it as evidence for some sort of behavioral element that you as a leader can then impact. Um, I think just exception reporting in general creates this this insight into your business that if you don't have exception reporting, you're not going to have. Um, that insight then creates, well, I think impact it can really create from that. So it's important to to take the time to to build it into your leadership rhythm. I think it's an important part of what what you should do as a leader. So picture this. So I grew up as a I grew up in Northern California, and uh, we were 49er fans. Ooh. And um, our quarterback was <laughs> Joe Montana. Oh, yeah. And so I'm at a 49ers game and I'm watching Joe Montana. And at some point throughout the game, numerous times, he would stop and look up at the scoreboard. Mm-hmm. He would just stand there and stare at it. It mattered to him. So exception reporting is the scoreboard. If you make it important to your team, They'll want to stand there and look at it, and they'll want to go back on the field and achieve great things. This is about leadership. So we we have encountered leaders who said, you know, eh, I don't really want to make anybody feel uncomfortable if they aren't performing well. And I don't know if exception reporting is fair. Come on, put up the score. It tells you as a leader the behavior that's in place or not in place, and it allows you to drive the business forward. It's a big deal, and exception reporting works, and it has worked everywhere, 100%, right, Brian? Everywhere we've used it, Yeah, 100%. So picture a report coming out on Monday morning that shows the results for the week in a narrow set of expectations. That matters, and it matters to the team. And if Joe Montana is on your team, he's going to want his number to be a great number. All right. Let me give you some quick things you can um, do to get this in place. So the first thing is expectations. So we're not joking about a narrow set of three to five expectations. It has to be narrow. They have to be the big ones. We have seen the best performance out of organizations that view the week as the time frame of the expectation. And then the month, the quarter, and the year. They start with the week. So every week the results are posted. So it's great if you can pick an expectation that can be quickly calculated and moved into a report for the week. That that really is of great significance. We have seen businesses literally explode their business, meaning in a good way, when they started reporting exception 
reporting like we're talking about on a weekly basis. You've got to pick the right three to five. Yeah, no, I I think you're exactly right. That week time frame is something that's somewhat controllable. If you're trying to create momentum in your team, if you look at the the month or the quarter of the year, it's tough to create momentum. But when you look at that week time frame, I think you can really do that. Um, you know, connecting with you know, the things that you really expect to happen. So when we look at expectations, you break that down. And these are the things that you expect to happen. And then connecting your team to the reasons behind it. So why do we expect these things to happen? How does it impact our purpose, our objectives, our, you know, the bigger things that we're going after? Trying to connect their hearts and their minds to their hands, to the things that, that you're expecting them to actually do. Yeah. So be very clear on the expectations uh, and have a very clear, and we'll get into this in a minute, rhythmic pattern of reporting them. Yeah. And it it will work for you. Mm -hmm. So the, the the next piece is overlooked by most organizations, and that is that the metrics that you're reporting need to be behavioral. They need to be behavioral. So think about that. It gives you a huge advantage. So you publish the report and the top performers at 95 out of 100, making up the number, and the bottom performer is at 75. So you have this range of 95 to 75. If your metrics are behavioral, you as a leader can go observe, hang out, spend time with the 95, understand it, do the same thing then with the 75, understand it, and you can change the world. Likely, the 75 does not know what the 95 does or doesn't know how to do it. And when you connect as a leader, With the behaviors that equal 75 and the behaviors that equal 95, everything changes because you can move the organization forward in dramatic fashion. So ideally, the key here is that you're selecting metrics, those three to five expectations that are behavioral. Yeah, I totally agree here. I think um, metrics are really just the evidence of the behaviors. (laughs) <laughs> so you can look to the metrics to tell if the behaviors are in place or not. So, you know, you look at that number on that spreadsheet and you and you can tell if you've done your, your homework ahead of time and you've seen that, you know, this specific behavior will produce this specific result. If, you, if, if you've determined that ahead of time and set that as the expectations, you can look at that metric and know, hey, these behaviors are either in place or they're not. And then from that, I think your role, based on that evidence, based on those metrics, that tells you where your coaching needs to really lie. You need to focus in on the behaviors that are driving or not driving those metrics. Yeah, as a leader who's experienced this, the one thing I've found is that when I go spend time with that, the, the 95, I often learn things that I did not know. Yeah, totally. So as a so as a leader, I come away much stronger. Yep. Understanding, oh, I can move the whole group to 95. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I I now get it. I understand it. So it benefits the leader. Mm-hmm. And the leader then may say, okay, we need a, a to to train differently. We need a, a realignment. You know, we need a mentorship program. There's many different things that will come from that. But once you understand that top performer, because they're they're beating your number. If the range is 95 to 75, your number is not 95. So 95 is ahead of you. What are they doing? How do we get there as a group? It changes everything. So that that that's a big one. Yeah. So know the behavior that equals the metric and choose metrics that are behavioral. So the the next thing we've seen is 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 rhythm is key. So If I know that on Monday morning, the report's going to come out that shows my ranking 
on the key metrics every Monday morning, that affects my behavior all week. I, you know, in my case, I would want to be number one every week. There wouldn't be a number that would be acceptable to me other than that. It varies by person, but the rhythm matters. So if you communicate and then execute to a rhythm, it it changes everything. It becomes cultural and it's so predictable and it you can make it very positive and very action oriented but it's very serious it's a big deal it would matter to me if you were posting my name on the screen up up there and and or on the email and the posting that showed my number and how it ranked that that would matter to me so I I would fight all week to get a great number. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. The rhythm and, you know, we've talked on this podcast a lot about leadership rhythm and um, you know, just the leader rhythm. And I think this is one of the, those key pieces in Gapology that, that leaders really need to attach themselves to create a leadership rhythm that, that will deliver the results that you're looking for. And there's many elements that can go into that depending on your business and so forth. But if you don't create this leadership rhythm, it creates this chaos that happens that creates fear and anxiety in your team and that type of thing that lowers confidence and, and that, but if you do develop a leadership rhythm around the things that are the most important, these three to five things, you know, it really can make, huge, huge leaps in your performance and, you know, being able to create confidence, lower fear, minimize chaos. That's all part of this leadership rhythm. Um, You know, look at that, analyze what you do when, what's the most important things, what are the least important things, what are the things that make impact, what are the things that don't, eliminate the things that don't and, and really focus in on the things that create that massive impact that you have at your fingertips. Yeah. So exception reporting rhythm matters. Yeah, totally. Tell the team when the report's coming out. Yep. Tell them that it matters and, and go for it. It, it, it changes everything. So the, the next thing that we've seen is that the impact of exception reporting varies within the team. So there's top performers who want to get even better and it actually moves their performance up and they they want to be number one. Mm -hmm. There are bottom performers who actually will improve their performance because they don't want to be called out as a bottom performer. So it brings the bottom performance up. It brings the top performance up as well, but it brings again, as we talked about earlier, the leader to the point where they can learn the behavioral difference between the top and the bottom and share that then with everyone and work to bring everyone to the top. So exception reporting works. Uh, It works because I want to be number one. It works because I'm scared to be last place. (laughs) It works. It works. So we have seen underperformers in an organization, when ex- listen to this, this is a big deal. We have seen underperformers in an organization where, when exception reporting was introduced, became the top performers because of exception reporting. It literally changed their behavior to where they became the top performers. It, uh, it creates a level of accountability, a level of excitement. Um, it, it, makes, it makes everyone better. And the leader gets better because they understand the behavioral difference between the two. So the impact may not be what you think, but it, it delivers top performance within the group. Yeah. And I think here, you know, we're not just talking about carrot and stick type things. We don't, we're not talking about exceptional reporting to create fear in the team and so forth. What we're trying to do is just really create a transparency in performance 
So if you oh, publish, I like that. say that again, say that again. <laughs> if we're trying to create a transparency in performance. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. I don't yeah. Have that shirt yet. <laughs> there we go. We need to add that one. Um, we want people to know where they stand people. And I think people want to know where they stand as a leader. We should, we should really be focusing on how can we create this impact in our team and our exception reporting really points to where you are making an impact as a leader. You know, how are you impacting your team and their performance? How are you impacting the, the organization as a whole? How are you impacting your customers, your clients? And I think that when you look at, what are the elements we're, we're measuring and reporting on? You can really align it with the things that matter most. Well said. Wow, you're on fire. <laughs> Must be the Chardonnay I've had tonight. You, Yeah, you need to get another glass. <laughs> last, uh, last item. So think about this. What if the exception reporting became your, your celebration points? What if it became the celebration culture? We we did a podcast that we really loved called We Are What We Celebrate. And it is so true. We are what we celebrate. So picture these this narrow set of metrics that you've determined are behavioral and that really drive the you know the profit of the organization, whatever whatever. And those became the things you celebrated. And the team knew that every month and every quarter, and then at the annual awards banquet, that this would be what we would celebrate. And that that would bring a focus within the group, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, that would be unbeatable. So we are what we celebrate. So what do you celebrate? What if you told the team that at the annual awards banquet this year, we're going to give out trophies for, for these three metric performances. And it's just a game changer. Um, what if you develop swag around these metrics? Oh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And, and the team yeah, was cool. wrapped in them. Mm -hmm. You know, so celebration is a leader's tool to motivate the team, top performers, underperformers, whoever, to totally different levels. And uh, so um, we view exception reporting and celebration to be key elements here to, to really being great. Th this podcast, if, if you could just take notes on it, write it down, make sure it's executed you know, within your group, unbelievable. So. Sorry, what are your thoughts on celebration, Brian? Yeah, no, I love that. So celebration, you know, when you were talking about culture there, it made me stop and think about all the root solutions that we have. So in our gapology model, we have three gaps, and under each gap, we have a root solution, which is really our method to close the gaps. So one of those is culture. And oftentimes when I'm looking at culture and I'm talking about that with, with people, um, it, it's a little bit more theoretical. People, they don't really connect with, what does that mean by culture? And we've talked about that on the podcast, that culture is really something that you're creating every day. Whether you want to or not, you're creating a culture. But this piece here, Mark, where you're talking about celebration, creating a rhythm of celebration, that does really build that culture um, where people are really proud of the results. So you look at the exception reporting, you see those as results. People can really be proud here when they, it could be a formal reward, you know, a big thing where you're, they receive a trophy or whatever, some sort of public recognition, but it could be certainly a, a handshake or a handwritten note or something like that from, from the leader as well. So, you know, I think there's a lot of power here that leaders really need to lean into. And it, you know, it, it shapes the behavior of the team yeah. for the entire year. Right. Week by week, by week, by day, by day, by day as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Totally. Um, you know, it, it affects everything. So don't underestimate this. Don't assume you've got it in place at the level it, it should be. Reevaluate it and, you know, really take, we, we covered so much in, in this 
30 minute podcasts that you can uh, really build upon, you know, take it, take it very seriously and uh, give us feedback. Yeah. Any, anything else, Brian? No, let me re- just review it for everybody. So um, the, the uh, tips that Mark laid out for you, so expectations, so make sure you're picking the right metrics to measure, keep them narrow, uh, behavioral, make sure that they're behavioral, that there's behaviors attached to them, uh, create a rhythm is the next thing around your reporting, um, impact, so you know, make sure that you're connecting with the impact that it makes, and then finally, celebration, so um, create a celebration rhythm. So those were the, the tips this week. And the only other Mark. one I would add is we've seen organizations that actually are not doing exception reporting at all. So the first thing would be to commit to exception reporting mm-hmm. and then follow those items that, that Brian just laid out. Yeah, love it. Excellent. Good tips, Mark. All right, nice thanks, job. Brian. Okay. Well done. All right, we will talk to everybody next week. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, we'll see you. Bye-bye. All right, that'll do it from here. For more information on Gapology or Gapology Inspirations, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. Talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.